Hey everyone, welcome back to another Firefly Studios video. Aaron here with another episode of Inspirations Behind Stronghold. For those of you who don't know, this is a series I do here at Firefly Studios where I take you guys in the community through the histories that inspired our titles. So this week we'll be looking at castle life. Uh, so all the different peasants, industries, food productions that you operate within your castle. With help of lead designer Simon Bradbury, we'll be looking at some of the different parts of the castle throughout history and how Firefly successfully implemented them in-game in our European titles. Enjoy. In for the pitch! So first off, we'll turn the clock all the way back to the inception of the idea of Stronghold. Why medieval Europe? Why feudalism, lords, ladies, knights, peasants? Why castles? Was the success of the Stronghold series all by grand design, or did the 1999 founding Firefly team just really love castles? Here's what Simon had to say about where it all began. I've always had an obsession for castles, ever since seeing them on holiday as a small boy. Initially, my passion was for the dramatic and brutal defences, walking the walls and imagining the excitements and terrors of an attack on these stone walls. Castles, however, have so many different interesting aspects to them. They're like great living machines, designed not only to maintain the walls, weapons and defences, but also look after the various inhabitants. To feed, clothe and entertain the castle's occupants requires a complex mix of medieval skills and systems, perfect for a simulation game. Castles also had a huge strategic role to play in the lands that they inhabit. Not just the management and protection of the towns and villages that grow up around them, but also much further afield controlling trade routes, securing borders, and maintaining dominance over wide swaths of land around them. So it was this founding fascination with both castle life and the strategy genre that spawned the perfect breeding ground for the Stronghold series, as armaments, industry, domestic lifestyle, and besieging were all needed in equal measure to be a successful medieval lord, both historically and within the Stronghold series. So the castle itself, as Simon had already stated, these are complex beasts of economic and social order which had a duality of being a home and defence for all those inside. Trying to portray a castle in a video game is harder than one might imagine. With dozens of services, personnel and utilities all with a shot of being represented in a virtual medieval landscape. You had great halls, kitchens, churches, chapels, pantries and even butteries. Yep, butteries were a real thing. But unfortunately they weren't rooms which exclusively made butter. They were instead a storeroom for beer. The name is due to the fact that beer butts, aka barrels, were kept there. The point is, with so many nuances and details to how a successful castle operated, how did Simon and Co pick and choose which ones had to be in game? Here's his answer. Well, there are probably over a hundred industries involved in a castle. More than we could reasonably add to a game and still keep it fun. Most of the crafts and skills we chose are pretty vital though, such as wood and stone to build the thing of course. Lots of weaponsmiths and iron to make them, food, ale and wine, candles and clothes, we have used a lot of resources in previous strongholds. The trick is however to give the game depth and atmosphere, but without sucking the enjoyment out of it. Take beer for example, to be totally realistic, we should have supply chains for hops, barley, yeast and even water to make the final product, and then maybe pewter or clay to make something to drink from. To me that is too complex, and certainly something that would detract from the RTS side of the game. So instead we just go hops to ale and assume the other ingredients. It gives the flavor of the process, but keeps it manageable. So like they say, moderation in all things. As we all know, when games get too realistic, it can suck the fun out of it. You are playing a video game after all. So it's a painstaking process of behind the scenes design and balancing, which have resulted in all the different castle industries and services you can construct within our games. But what about the peasants that you castle builders out there employ to these industries? Where did the various levels of peasant stupidity originate from, and why get voice actors to give comedic stereotypical accents to the men and women that are feeding your population? Enough to make any lord nervous about his next meal. Here's Simon again. There are just so many absurd stories about the poorly educated, overly superstitious folk that inhabited those times, that I think it would be weirder if they all talked sense. In France, animals were often put on trial for unnatural activity, these were not normal times. Instead it was a scary, hard but colourful time to be alive and the language needed to reflect that. As to the voice acting, we have always just hired good actors. So this acted as a creator of two birds, one stone for Firefly. We were able to inject a little bit of humour and character to the gameplay while also providing a little bit of educational truth for the players. 
Also a side note, this extended to military units as well, as your basic man-at-arms were given historically common accents I thought we were standing still! while your knights talked with trained pronunciation and arrogance. I need a horse! Now that we've covered castle lifestyles, industries and the people that populate them, what about the aesthetics? Fear factor, crime and punishment, the little details you put in place to add extra layers to your castle, to not only give it identity, but you yourself as the ruling lord. Here's Simon's take. The good lord slash bad lord system going back to Stronghold 1 was an attempt to depict just how different the justice or lack of its system worked in medieval times. To allow the player to rule with an iron fist or inspire loyalty in his grateful subjects so he could choose to let his peasants have some time off and plant gardens for them, give them maypoles and other entertainments like dancing bears, although frankly this does seem a bit bad lordy, and in return they will fight more strongly for him. Far more fun however is to go all Mr Burns on the peasants and make them work twice as hard in return for not torturing them. When it comes to the actual torturing however, we admit to being a little bit squeamish, so the majority of the time no blood gets spilled. So that was our penultimate episode of this series of the inspirations behind Stronghold. The next episode we'll be covering siege equipment and traps and you know overall defences within your castle, um, and that will finish our European series. Next year, I do plan on doing a Crusader series, so don't worry, all of those who have left comments saying, where's Crusader? Um, well, I'll be doing a Crusader series next year. But that said, if you do have any topics uh, or specifically parts of the castle that you'd be interested in me covering uh, for the Crusader series that maybe I haven't covered in this series for the European titles, leave a comment below and let me know. Uh, I'd be interested to hear about that. We also probably will do a legends one so don't worry legends will be covered maybe like a special next year and as always if you like the video make sure you leave a like and subscribe here on youtube for more firefly goodness every single week see you next week